started. My name is Jennifer Jones and I'm the Director of Parks and Recreation and I want to welcome you back to Fairview Neighborhood Center. So welcome. Kind of curious, just for my own sake, raise your hand if you actually attended the very first meeting that we had right after the shootings. Let's see what kind of return rate we have here. The first meeting, you, that, okay. Did you all come to the first meeting in the second row? Back in April? No, no, Okay, so this is three months later, and we met back in April you know, to discuss the um, shootings that had happened uh, in Younger Park, as well as in the neighborhood of Mar on Maryland Avenue. And from that meeting, we broke it, we broke it down into uh, groups of six, and those groups reported back. And from those uh, reported group um, uh, responses, we developed six, or excuse me, five action items. So tonight, we're here to report out on those five action items. We also sent out to those of you who gave us your email addresses from the very first meeting, we sent out two progress reports. So one went out in May and one went out in July, just so everyone would know what sort of progress we were making on those action items. So before I get going on the action item report outs, I wanted to make a few introductions. Um, we had a city team that comprised of Joanne Martin of the Marketing and, uh, Marketing and Communications. So Jan Joanne, if you'll raise your hand. We had the Director of Public Works, Gaynell Hart. We had the Community Action Team from Police. I know Community Action Team's in the house. That's all two of you walk in, okay. We had Keith Wright from Community Development. Andy Reeder from Parks and Rec, Park Service. And Charlotte Lester, Parks and Recreation, the Neighborhood Center Coordinator. Also in the house tonight, we have Scott Bray Brayband from Lynchburg City Schools. Did I forget anybody? Kent White, Community Development Director with us tonight. Okay, without further ado, action item one, we're going to call up uh, Police Chief Raul Diaz and or the CAT team to report out on action item one, which was a revitalization of the Neighborhood Watch Program and um, informant training. Hey everyone, my name is John Fabian. I'm with Lynchburg Community Action Team for the Lynchburg Police Department. Um, one of the things, I know one of the big things we were trying to get started for the past few weeks was the months leading up to this was getting together the CRC program, the Concerned Reliable Citizen Program. And since then, not only have they gotten it started, but we have 25 already signed up that are active in informants in the city of Lynchburg, and we have a whole lot more that are ready to go to the next classes, and we're getting those put together now. So it's already made some headway. We've already had people calling in and been able to work off that information. If anyone would like to find out how to become parts of that, I know that some people have raised their hand that they weren't here for the last meeting. Um, we can give you more information on how to become part of that and become a CRC, which gives police a better opportunity to go in there and solve the problems versus just responding to calls that we can't do anything about. So if anyone has any questions or anything, we'll stick around a little bit at the end and be able to help you all with that. Um, the neighborhood watch, I know they still have one for this area. They haven't had anyone, um, Stephen Wood said, they haven't had someone come forward to be the lead of the neighborhood watch yet. They had a few people that showed interest, and he's just really trying to find someone that's willing to head it up to work hand in hand with him to lead the neighborhood watch. So if anyone's interested in that, um, we've given you the contact for Stephen Woods so that y'all can um, get with them. Can I say something about that? Yes, sir. Uh, I was the former neighborhood watch captain for the Fairview Heights for three years. I had to give it up for the last half second and had to go to the hospital. But I gave Stephen Wood two names, addresses, and telephone of two men that were interested in taking it over. And the last time I talked to him, I said, well, have you talked to them? He said, well, I called and no knew when I'm out. You're not going to get in touch with somebody by calling them one time if they don't ask you. If you want to talk to them, you got to keep on calling. 
They had a meeting here on June 28th, yeah. and I think that maybe 20, it was like 25 people showed up for this potential reorganization of the neighborhood watch. Did anyone here attend that meeting? This was hosted by uh, the police department. On June 28th here at Fairview Center, mm -hmm. they had a meeting to try to reorganize that neighborhood watch, reinstate it. At our last meeting, one of the topics of discussion was that no one was aware of when that meeting happened. There were many people here who were interested, but they didn't notice the meeting had even happened. Well, we'll get with Stephen Wood and try to make it so that we know we're more aware next time for the habit. Now, I know there's a few people that had stepped up and said they were willing to do it, and then um, they just halfway through either stopped responding to calls or said that something came up and they weren't allowed to, which happens for everyone. So they're still looking right now that they'll know of anyone, and we'll be more than happy to try to get that name to Stephen Wood. But this is what we were hoping would happen here at this meeting is that we'd get some leads in some way to get someone to step forward and host that neighborhood watch meeting. So well, what I can tell you will happen from this is we will come up with another date. We'll meet back specifically for neighborhood watch and we'll have the communications and marketing department send out a press release specifically about that neighborhood watch. So we'll try to send to you, we'll use our, just so you know when you get the email, we'll use our neighborhood center coordinator here at Fairview, Sue Downs Lloyd. You'll get an email from her if you've given us your email address on that initial sign-in sheet. Otherwise, communications will send out the date for that next meeting. And I, of course, we don't have that right now, but we will, we'll send that to you. That's, a, I mean, that's, that's a big part of what we need to happen here. It's the community watch, okay, neighborhood watch program. Okay. Any other thoughts about that? We in agree, agreement that that will be an action step of ours? Yeah, how, how about the area are you covering? We live on Gilmore Circle. How about the area of the state of the on Carmel? I'd say the only one that would be able to tell you that exactly is Stephen Wood. But I know for Gilmore Circle, if it wasn't covered in this, it would be covered down there um, at another one. But even if it wasn't, um, even if you came to this neighborhood watch, the officers we saw here, this is technically South 2, on the other side of Campbell Avenue, South 1. We work the same. It's all the time. I worked South 1 for four years. I'm always in South 2 or always in South 1 where Gilmore Circle is. So they would, the same officers would be coming and getting the complaints and hearing what needs to happen or what needs fixing. And the same voices would be heard that way. Well, the last neighborhood watch covered from Obie Street to uh, Falwell to up here. But Gilmore Circle down off of Fort Avenue, that wasn't covered. But that's a wonderful thought, though. You know, we need more smaller groups instead of one person or a couple of people covering the whole area. Need maybe somebody from this neighborhood and that neighborhood covering something like that. That, that should come up at the meeting about the uh, strength the numbers. All right, yes, doing that. Just to follow up on that, we actually do have a lot of smaller neighborhood watch teams. They're in um, different areas, in the area specific. Stephen Wood can give you the exact specifics on each neighborhood watch, where they're located, what area yeah, they're covered. Yeah. But um, the problem is, I think Would you mind coming to the, the microphone so we can get you on tape? It's We need you on for public records, okay. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, we do have those neighborhood watches for the smaller areas, and we do separate them into area specific, generally neighborhood specific. And I know right now we currently have well over 20 neighborhood watch here in the city of Lynchburg. Um, the problem is not all of them are quite active. Um, <clears throat> and the part to keep them active is that neighborhood watch captain, the leader of the neighborhood watch, and everybody kind of shies away from it, but it's not a hard job. Here's one right here that you can talk to. Um, mainly, the neighborhood watch captain is just going to be the liaison between the neighborhood watch group and the police department. So you would be responsible for creating some type of text message that goes out, phone call, or a email tree, and let everybody know when your meetings are going to be somewhere and where they're going to be at. So if you want to have it here, at this rec center, you would contact Parks and Rec, ask them is it okay to use the center for a certain night at a certain time, and Stephen Wood would actually help you with all of that. 
So being a neighborhood, the neighborhood watch captain is not a very hard position at all, but for whatever reason, people tend to shy away from it. But we do have a lot of them. Um, for Gilmore Circle, I know we have Diamond Hill, which is not too far away from you. Um, that's one there. I know there's another right there on Florida Avenue, but I don't believe that one's currently active. That's Gilmore Circle, the sign is still up, but yeah. it's inactive. Yeah. We can join forces. Yeah. I think a big thing that was mentioned last time in the meeting was the fact that the city couldn't do it all, the police couldn't do it all, Parks and Rec couldn't do it all, but this had to be a joining of forces between the neighborhood, the people in the neighborhoods, as well as city staff. So we're ready to help, we just need that person. Well, there's also some misconceptions about it, too. People have the idea that if they become a neighborhood watch captain, they have to have a meeting every other day or once a week or something like that. No, you don't. You can set a meeting once a year and still call a neighborhood watch. You know, it's a lot of different. You never see that in print anywhere, you know, where it says uh, you make the captain and the people that belong to it establish when they want to have a meeting, where and when. So it's not just one person calling all the shots. It's the whole team calling it. So people may be understanding the role or their responsibilities would make it easier for them to step forward, I guess, take it as what you're saying. Okay. Your name again, sir? I'm Luther Rhodes with the Lynchburg Police Department on the Community Action Team. And, and you're exactly right about that, and that's something a lot of people don't understand. I believe most of our active neighborhood watches only meet every other month. Any other questions for us? So we take the takeaway from that is new date for the neighborhood watch reestablishment meeting here at Fairview. And we'll send that out, okay? Communications as well as email. The information that you gave us when you signed up, contact sheets, we'll send that to you. Okay. Anything else for the CAT team? Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, action item two, and this this revolves around landlord issues. So Kent uh, White and Keith Wright um, were the community development contact people for that. So uh, if you don't mind, Keith, if you'd come up to the microphone and just talk about um, the progress that you've made and your walkthrough. I know you had um, several people show up for the walkthrough and made a lot of progress. So we're real, real proud about the progress that we made. Um, action item two. I'm, uh, I'm Keith Wright uh, with the Community Development Department, and I also facilitate the uh, Community Code Compliance Team. And uh, you may also hear it referenced as Triple CT or uh, some other acronym, but uh, that's what it stands for. Um, we had a a, uh, a walkthrough. Um, we've been conducting walkthroughs for years now. Um, we've been here before, uh, done walkthrough off of Light Street, off the of Fairview. Um, done multiple ones up here over the years. Um, the last one we did was scheduled after that last meeting on, uh, in the middle of June. Um, a number of people, you, you also have in your packet, I believe, if you picked it up at the desk, uh, a summary of that, um, which is actually in the packet is action item number three, um, if you're following along. Um, it has a list of the, uh, the members that were present and the neighbors that were present. Um, some of the items that we picked up uh, we categorize into uh, different um, areas. One of them is code compliance. In that area, um, we had a total of 18 properties that we addressed a number of different items, including trash, uh, overgrown lots, and, uh, and what's also listed as the abandoned inoperative motor vehicle uh, violations, which basically mean that you have to have your current tags and uh, on your car with the current inspection and run the order. Um, they are listed out in the summary, and um, we had uh, real good compliance with the notices that we sent out. I think we only towed one vehicle of the ones that we addressed. Um, every, the owners took care of all of the others um, on their own, um, and I think we did have several properties that we cut and cleaned up. Um, I think there may be one left that we're um, that we're watching. 
under the zoning category, there was um, a possible illegal business that was noted during the walkthrough. Um, we, are, we reviewed that, and that was unfounded. The Public Works Department, and we do have Gaynell Hart here. I don't, Gaynell, were you with the walkthrough by chance? I did not that Okay. Um, there, there were a number of items that one of our members picked up. Um, they are all listed here. Um, in just several examples that were picked up. A lot of times we get butt, brush and bulk pick up, litter, that type of thing. Um, but there was also like um, a stop sign that was covered. Um, there was a culvert that needed cleaning out. And all of those, all of these items to the Public Works Department have been assigned and are working on. Um, one of the other areas is our Building Inspections Department. Um, we do have a number of these. The, the three properties that we noted during the walkthrough were what we would consider new cases. Um, we do have a number of other cases that we're working on in the area, but these were the three that we worked on. Um, typically, these are exterior uh, violations. Um, we do get a lot of complaints on interior issues. A lot of tenants will call um, and ask for inspections, and that's where we can come in on, a, on an inspection if it is we're invited in to do, by, uh, to do an inspection. Um, those were the items that we picked up. Obviously, it's really kind of like a moving target. Um, I always push the 856 city number. If you have an, a property that you would like to report, um, we do like getting your name and number, but you can report anonymously. Um, just giving your name and number gives us a little bit more detail uh, in case we have any questions. Um, the 856 city number, just always keep that on your refrigerator door or wherever, somewhere convenient. Um, you can always call in any of the complaints that uh, we can address um, and uh, we can take care of those. Does that seem to work well for you guys? Okay. Great job. Thank you, Keith. Any other questions for Keith? Community development about the walkthrough? 856 City. The number is 2489. And that's a central call number. The uh, call takers are trained in the questions that we've that, uh, to ask you in return so that it can get to the right person. Um, once you call, it's directly emailed right to the inspector working that area. I say you didn't walk through. What area did you walk through? Uh, right around Light Hayden, uh, Gill, um, pretty much around the center. Uh, going down maybe to Fairview, uh, at, within walking distance, I'll say. You, did you go down to Fort Avenue? No. We didn't cross the street at all. Okay. Good issue. There were people here that um, took note of some complaints over there. Mm -hmm. And so what we what we do in those situations is get with somebody like you and say, hey, you know, we'll get with you separately and say, we'll go over there. Okay. You're going to be around for yeah. Thank you, Keith. Thank you. Okay, action item three, which I think was two, is crime prevention through environmental design. And this is where we took a look at Yonker Park where the shootings happened to see what sort of um, issues may have contributed to that crime happening in the first place. And so we have to report out on that. Gaynell Hart with Public Works. You may or may not know that Public Works actually maintains the parks and we build the parks. So we do all CIP and Public Works does the maintenance. So we have Gaynell Hart, Director of Public Works, as well as our Park Service Manager, Andrew Reeder. Good evening, everybody. Can you hear me? We had a number, but we had about uh, 11 items that we needed to take care of. Most of them were fairly small, things like branches that need to be raised for better sight distance, uh, along the basketball court, some graffiti that needed to be cleaned up, clearing branches around lighting. We've done all that. Um, there was some seating that needed to be done around the basketball court. We're going to do that this fall. Um, we um, we have some smaller items that are going to be scheduled for this fall, like pressure cleaning grills and um, picnic tables. We take those inside and we do a thorough job and clean them up and then take care of those usually more in the fall and winter. 
Um, so we've done some minor cleanup around the park. And one thing that was not mentioned here that we're planning to do is that there is a wall right next to the basketball court that keeps getting to be damaged by folks in the park and they rip off the top stones and we're trying to go ahead and, and make that a more solid wall and people also have been hiding stuff behind that wall and I think it's been a problem for the police department. So we're going to try to put concrete in that wall and it'll be harder for folks to hide things in that wall. So that's the progress that we have made on our list so far. <laughs> yeah, this is really cool because the kids have been hiding stuff uh, under these little uh, you know, paver stones that weigh you know, maybe 10 pounds. So now they're going to pour a big monolithic pour of concrete that's going to weigh about 1,000 pounds. <laughs> So let's see if I said dope, dope under that. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to go back there and just go, oh, my stash is under there. <laughs> yeah, and there it's going to stay. So time capsule. Uh, thanks, DML. Actually, uh, Public, uh, Public Works has done a great job down there and uh, making the park look great. And uh, they knocked out just about all the items that were on the list. And uh, got a few things left, uh, but really making a lot of headway. And um, uh, as she said, we raised the, some of the uh, grants above the court, and uh, we did uh, purchase the security cameras uh, we talked about, and we're working with our uh, tech guru right now. Uh, got a, a security, um, I don't want to call it, it's a, it's a, uh, uh, it's a uh, enclosure for the camera to go into so that it won't, won't be vandalized. We're working out uh, mounting the camera now and, and in different, and also uh, in uh, mounts so that we can take it to different parks. And uh, so people won't know what park the cameras are going to be located in or when. And uh, we'll have uh, the cameras out in the park in the next 30 days and then we'll be moving them around. And, uh, by the next meeting, hopefully, we'll have some uh, pictures to show you, and uh, we'll uh, see, uh, we'll evaluate uh, how well the program is doing, and then we'll decide if we want to uh, purchase more cameras or not. But uh, it's just a, an avenue that we're going to explore to see if this uh, helps us, uh, you know, in our uh, goal to uh, make our parks uh, safer. Uh, so that's one of the things uh, that we're doing, and. Uh, not directly related uh, to Younger, but related to the whole Fairview Younger incident is the uh, uh, painting of the uh, park out here and the gel coat and repair of the uh, uh, basketball uh, court and, and uh, making our, keeping our park looking its best. And that was just completed. It took a little longer uh, than we had uh, wanted to, but I think he'll admit it, it looks good and all the kids that have been playing on it. Uh, they must like it as well, so everything uh, uh, turned out well, and uh, uh, we're moving on to uh, the next basketball, uh, uh, next basketball court, which is uh, Miller, and we'll be wrapping that up here soon. You'll be hearing about that from one of the other reportees. But I think what's really interesting is that we have this group that's coalesced around this park, this community center. And younger, and we've got all these people that are uh, that have uh, invested into it, and good things are happening here. And I can see nothing but good things happening in the future. And we're going to uh, see good results here, and we're going to get this uh, 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 neighborhood watch going again. And uh, uh, things are looking up, so I think it's a great thing for the neighborhood, and it's a great thing for Lynchburg because people are going to see that this neighborhood is worth investing in. And uh, I think that's going to be, be reflected in the statistics in the future, and it's just going to be reflected, hopefully, in the quality of life around here for you folks. Because that's what we're interested in, making all, your quality of life better. Thank you. Yes, sir. Mr. Reed, uh, I'm going to mention something that you didn't bring up. But we have noticed living closer to the park, and there's an awful lot more patrols, police patrols, down and back at patrol. It used to not be there since that shooting. Anytime you look up just about, you can see a police officer going down there looking around. 
and they don't just ride in and turn around and come back. They go in and look and see what's going on. So that's a very positive thing. Well, and you could always thank thank our police. You know, and they don't get enough thanks every day. And uh, but I can guarantee you that that's because of phone calls the police get. And they direct their patrols where uh, you know where they're needed, and uh, they do a great job every day. So we all know we need to do a better job of thanking them. So. Thank you for bringing that up. Thank you, police folks. <laughs> they don't mind baked cookies, I've heard either. So, <laughs> any other questions about environmental design, crime prevention for environmental design? What's happening at Younger Park? Andy, did you want to mention the fact that we have plans for the uh, Arabian Community Orchard also? Yes, right, right now we're, we're still in the uh, planning stage of an Arabian Community Orchard in Younger Park, and basically this would be a teaching orchard, but it would also be an orchard that that uh, that, that uh, we would have in the park that we could teach uh, kids how orchards work, but we could grow different heirloom uh, varieties of, of fruit, and we would actually yield uh, crops that uh, would be shared uh, mostly with uh, the neighborhood, but some uh, sold to generate income to help keep the orchard running. And we would use this as a uh, uh, kind of a, uh, a learning tool to see if we could get more of these type of things up and running in the city, uh, because we believe that this type of thing would not only uh, be a great educational tool, but lead to healthy living, healthy eating, and uh, just uh, be a great uh, tool for the city of Lynchburg and be a new, uh, way to get uh, more nutritious items out there for for kids and adults to eat. Uh, so uh, we're pretty excited about it. It's something that you see in other uh, communities, uh, and we certainly like to investigate uh, uh, doing it here in Lynchburg. Our friends of Lynchburg Parks and Recreation are currently taking donations for that project. Right. Can I ask uh, one more thing, then? Just to let you guys know, I'm sure you're interested in Capitol Street Parade when it's going to open. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yes, Kemper Street Bridge is on time and on budget, so it should open the middle of, at the very latest, the middle of September. We're hoping to open it a little bit earlier, and we will open it just as soon as possible. Right now, we're waiting on a railing, a safety railing, so there's no way to open it without the safety railing, but it is on time and on budget, so we anticipate it to be open in the next several weeks. Probably the most said tonight. <laughs> Good job, Daniel Hart. Thank you all. Thank you for maintaining our parts for us. <laughs> okay, on to action item four, which was uh, to provide more positive places and programs for teens. And to report on, out on that, we have um, Charlotte Lester and Jimmy Oliver from Parks and Recreation, and then Scott Brayban, who we co branded this three on three league with from Lynchburg City Schools. More positive places and programs for teens. That was action item four. We made a lot of progress on this action item, had a lot of coverage, news coverage, about our basketball leagues. Well, good evening, everybody. I'm Scott Ray Grant, superintendent for Lynchburg City Schools. I was here at the first meeting, and I'm glad to be here at the second for follow-up. I'm really proud of the cooperation that we've had with Parks and Rec to provide opportunities for kids this summer. Right before school ended, we had a flyer go out about the basketball leagues that basically went to over 2,000 students. And we have, I believe, anywhere from one to 200 kids that participated in the basketball leagues this summer. We gave them something to do when they were uh, out for the summer for school. Um, we were really pleased. I believe the finals took place just this past weekend. And Charlotte, you probably want to come up and say a little bit about that. But I will say, just in summary from my end, the school system is going to spend more time cooperating with the city, Parks and Rec, to find more activities for our young people to be doing when school is not in session so they can stay busy. Idle hands are not positive hands for our youth. They need to be busy and engaged. And this was a wonderful partnership that got many more kids involved. And once we get them involved, we can connect with them and form relationships. And that's what we need to be doing with our young people today. So I'm going to let Charlotte and Jimmy come up and give you a few bit more details. It was a good first start, and you will see this partnership deepen 
in the summers ahead. So, Charlotte, Jimmy. Hi, I'm Charlotte Lester. I'm the coordinator for Neighborhood Centers. And uh, as uh, Dr. Redbrand mentioned, uh, we worked together with Lynchburg City Schools and the Lynchburg Police Department um, to offer a summer basketball league for our youth. And it was a very positive experience uh, for everyone, a very active um, summer. Games were going on Fridays, Saturdays, and Sundays, and as a, a Dr. Raybrand mentioned, um, well over 100 youth participating, kids from different neighborhoods coming together to play on the same team. And I want Jimmy um, Oliver to come and speak to you a little bit about some of the details and successes of the um, this basketball summer league. Um, I was able to uh, run the clock for a few days, but Jimmy was out there refing and actively involved, and he can tell you uh, a little more about it. Thank you. Good evening. My name is Jimmy Oliver. I'm a rec specialist at the Diamond Hill Community Center. Um, I had the opportunity to participate um, in the three-on-three -three basketball league, which happened on every Friday, um, as Charlotte mentioned, um, where kids participated um, in games for two hours. Um, Tarika Grooms, who really coordinated it and really put this together, and really collaborated with the Lynchburg, Lynchburg City Police as well as Lynchburg City Schools, um, really providing a great service for our kids. It was a need, they wanted to play basketball, but I think what was more important was once the kids were able to come out and play basketball, the relationships that Tarika, Lieutenant um, Tony Cruz, Officer Kayla Young, they were building relationships with kids. I think too many times we only see the negatives that are happening. And to be able to see that on Friday evenings and then go on Saturdays and see them play over at Miller Park. Um, you know, Tony Cruz is out there refing as well as coaching the kids. We have a number of volunteers who came out and ref um, as well. We have volunteer coaches. Um, and again, like um, Charlotte and Dr. Brayland said, um, the need is there. We need to give them opportunities where they can be successful, where they can be surrounded by positive people. We're going to lead them in the right direction. And the basketball league really set that, you know, it was a really positive step. And again, um, Tariqa Rooms did a fantastic job bringing everyone together. Um, the championship games were held this past weekend at Miller Park. Um, and I think one thing that I took out of it is at the end, a lot of times when kids are playing sports, they want to win all the time. Uh, one of the things is how do you respond when you lose? And the losing teams, they were staying you know, around, taking pictures of the winning teams, congratulating each other, and it was a really positive vibe. I mean, everybody was excited um, to be there and see the conclusion and to see the final product. And it was a product of kids in the community coming together in these different sections, playing together, building relationships, and doing a positive thing that Lynchburg needs to really see nowadays. And um, it was just great to be a part of it. Um, and again, I can't, you know, again, not mention to Rika Grooms, who really put this together with Scott Brabrand and his team with Lynchburg City Police, with Lieutenant Tom Cru you know, Tony Cruz, um, you know, um, Officer Young. They really put together a great program that we need to continue to do, and it's going to be great. So thank you very much for the opportunity. And of course, um, the success of the program was also very much um, founded on the community interest and community support. There were a number of um, really invested community volunteers that stepped up as coaches, as referees, as organizers. Um, Mr. Robert Flood is one of the main organizers for the um, for the league, along with all the staff that. Um, that Jimmy mentioned. So uh, that's one really important and successful program that we've collaborated with for youth and to improve opportunities and find new ways for to, to connect with youth. Another is a model program um, that we are working with the uh, sports outreach, and that is a, uh, a youth chess instruction program. And so we're piloting a program um, at a center, at the Uter Center, and, 
and hoping to be able to expand that to other sites as well. Um, and we're working with the schools and with the sports outreach on that project. We're working with the schools in other ways too. Um, the centers host the guidance counselor meetings, um, which travel from center to center. It gives an opportunity for Lynchburg City Schools staff to get inside the neighborhood and see where the kids come after school. So that's been a really neat partnership that we will be um, expanding again this year. And in addition to that, we will be hosting parent engagement workshops at the community centers um, through the Office of Engagement, Equity, and Opportunity with the Lynchburg City Schools. So we'll be providing opportunities for parents in the neighborhood setting. Um, another thing that I think is um, a really good opportunity, and this goes beyond youth, but has the capacity to impact youth and, and everyone in the neighborhood, is um, a new uh, program that we're going to be exploring this coming fall, working with the police department. Uh, we're offering coffee with community, so look for um, some more information about that. We'll be hosting just a really informal um, an informal, relaxed setting where it's no agenda, it's just an opportunity for you to connect with your police officers in the neighborhood center setting. So that's another way that Lynchburg Parks and Recreation and other um, and the police department are working together to um, connect with the community. Any questions? I don't have a question, but I, may I approach? What? We're, we're uh, going to do the action, uh, we're reporting on the action items first, and then we're going to open up the microphone for the audience, if that's okay. Okay. So, so is there any questions for Charlotte, Dr. Reagan? Any questions? There's three programs that happened. Um, one was five on five, one was a three on three basketball, and one was a chess program. And I'm sure the parks played a role in the five on five. Okay. No other questions? Thank you very much. Thank you. I think Charlotte, you may have to stay up this one. Okay. And then finally, action item five was uh, pulling our resources, the community resources around Fairview Center, churches, organizations, agencies who actually service youth, pulling our resources and trying to put forward some programs and some other neighborhood opportunities. And we had our um, Fairview Neighborhood Center coordinator, Sue Downs Lloyd, put together a meeting and she had a really good turnout. And so Charlotte's going to report out about what happened at that Fairview meeting uh, where we invited churches, organizations, and agencies that run out of this neighborhood. So Charlotte Lester. Uh, so the um, coffee, coffee chat, chat with Businesses, churches, and neighborhood stakeholders was held here on July 11th. About 18 people attended. Um, any of you in present tonight attend? Okay, I see a few hands. Very good. Um, some of the discussions at the meeting included better communication, and I think we've heard that here tonight, a need for better communication so people are aware of meetings and opportunities in the neighborhood. Um, there was um, discussion about the Lynchburg, Virginia Resource Network, which has been meeting on alternate Thursdays, and I believe that meeting will be taking place, um, there's been a shift of location that will be taking place here at the Fairview Center. And if you are on our contact list, then um, that's something that we can be sure to include you on uh, the communication chain. So be sure that you're on the contact list at the, at, um, at the door where you came in. Um, a couple of other items discussed were about um, youth delinquency and, and the community and city response to that um, and a variety of different perspectives. And um, just positive ways to engage teens and uh, their peers to have a positive influence on the neighborhood. So those were the key points that were discussed at the meeting on July 11th. 
And um, I'm glad some of you were able to be there. Thank you. Okay, before we open the microphone, I also wanted to invite up our mayor, Honorable Mayor Jerry Foster, to the microphone for a few words, if you don't mind. And we also, I'll, I'll let her in, 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 introduce her um, fellow council members. Thank you. Well, thank you. Well, I see my fellow council member Sterling Lester here. I don't think I see anyone else. Sterling, you want to come up and join me? Because this is sort of near your neighborhood and where you hang out on a daily basis. Thank you for uh, allowing me to say a few words. You know, I think it's so encouraging that this community meeting was held, that there were definitely some problems that were listed. But I'm extremely proud of the solutions that I'm hearing tonight. And, and to me, the solutions involved a number of, of things. One, the city is listening. Two, that we came together and worked together as a community. You as citizens, Parks and Rec, the schools, the police, the planning, uh, leaving out public works and I think that only then collectively can we tackle problems that face us and I hope that this is the beginning of a true collective approach to some of the problems that are here in our community you know the problems best that are in this community and you no solutions and have been thinking about them. So I want you to know that I'm listening, the city is listening, and any time that I pledge to you, any time that you need me to come here, I will come. We all have busy schedules, but some things are priority. And um, I made it a priority to come here tonight, although I had a couple of meetings, so I was about 15 minutes late, and I hate to be late. but. You know, I just heard wonderful things, and, and I thank you all, citizens of this community, and I thank all the staff. You did just an awesome job, and I hope it is a true beginning, and it's ongoing. It doesn't stop here. I think this is just the beginning. And I think you all have been a wonderful example of how we can tackle the things in this community that might tear us apart, not pull us together. But you've done a wonderful, stellar job of pulling us together around the issues that you presented. So thank you so much from the bottom of my heart. Thank you. Thank you for listening to me ramble on a touch. Yes, my name is Sean Wild, and I'm just honored to be here. I'm so excited for the work that you're doing in this community. I'm so excited. I know we came together after that shooting and some other incidents that happened. But out of a negative thing has come some great things, has come some positive things. And one thing about Lynchburg, we always put resources together. That's why I lived in Richmond, I lived in Washington, and I'm from Lynchburg, but it's nothing like Lynchburg, Virginia, because we, put, we rise to the challenge. We always support each other. So I'm so thankful for the work um, that you're doing here at the community center, and also the, the basketball tournament weekends. I'm on the middle park almost every weekend for one function or another. And I was so excited to see the young guys and girls playing together peacefully and a great setting to see the police there and so many others there working together. And that's what it's all about, our, our community pulling those resources together with schools and everyone else pulling all those resources together. And the last weekend, I was at the Park Rock Church, which is right down the street. They had a community, they had a youth event there this past Saturday. And it was so good to see the churches working together. All of us in our community bringing our resources, our different pieces, bring them all together. And I'm thankful for all of our citizens, our community persons, not just sitting back, but also getting involved in the community and coming out tonight to voice your concerns. And again, myself, and echo what, what, what Mayor Foster said, I'm also going to make myself available. Anytime you have a question, or anytime I can come to a meeting, 
I'm in the dark, you're going to be good at busy schedules. So anything that I can do to stop my schedule, I'm going to go to Norfolk tonight. But I told my sister I couldn't go. I was like, I need to be at Fairview Heights tonight to make sure I'm represented, to make sure I'm here, um, the concerns of our community, to make sure I'm doing my part as your city council representative. It's your voice. So what I can do to make sure your voice is being heard. Bless you. Okay, now's the time that we're going to open the microphone to any of the neighbors, anybody that wants to, even if you've spoken already, um, you want to reiterate something, your ideas matter, this is, this is your opportunity to come up to the microphone and be part of whatever you say will be part of public record, okay? So your ideas matter, you matter, so please come up and share with us. My name is P.J. Reed, and as the Councilman Wilder alluded to, I'm from Heart to Heart, and we did have a youth rally. We call it the, uh, it takes a village, youth and family sum. And it was about various topics, including, uh, we wanted to, first of all, appear to the youth. Topics such as peer pressure, respect for self and others, respect for authority, self-esteem, violence, conflict prevention, career work, and money, in that order. This, of course, was to give younger people and teenagers a more brighter perspective on what their futures can be. Uh, we have people such as uh, Officer Rose, who I think is here. He spoke on uh, respect for authority, of course. <laughs> and we had others, Alvin Jones, youth case manager for uh, workforce. All these combined speakers got together and presented a, a, a breakdown of things that youth are going to need in this day and age. And it was, it was quite, quite good. We, of course, we expected a better turnout, but then again, we're going to, we plan on doing it again another time with, uh, with speakers speaking on those same topics. Uh, also, there's a magazine called Beyond Today that uh, came out with an article about raising moral children. This is in the book right here. But it, uh, it basically was talking about bringing children up in a more Christian-like atmosphere. So when they get in the real world, they can be kinder to each other and, and look at life at a better perspective, a newer perspective that will shine a light on themselves of being good people instead of getting out in the world and just mixing with everybody else on a, on a, in a bad atmosphere. Also, I've been uh, reading the Daily Advance, and as y'all noted earlier, Lynchburg is paying attention uh, there's an article that was in the Daily Advance on the 6th, on the 19th of July. The nation needs more Lynchburgs. So people are definitely paying attention to what we're doing here and how we're doing it. Uh, there was another one that came out on the 15th of July. Uh, this was, of course, well, it, it gave a nationwide perspective on things, the sad narrative, narrative of race in America. These are topics that we all need to read in order to better enlighten ourselves on the actual state of race relations and basically just how to deal with it, how to combat the negative influences of it. There's another article from the 31st of July that uh, a pastor at Lynchburg College is sponsoring a training center for people to get more involved in neighborhood, uh, neighborhood atmospheres as far as being uh, leaders in their community to more give my better perspective on being good and the things it takes. There's also an article on uh, race and poverty by a gentleman by the name of Bill McBratney that was in about that same same paper, that same uh, page. Uh, of course, again, expressing the state of the nation and how we can better be aware of how to combat these things so as not to be a totally negative influence to bring some positive feedback into the scenario. And I think a gentleman mentioned earlier about uh, LPD getting, getting some good commendation here. There's an article uh, that uh, the Deputy Chief, Major Swisher, put in here about thanking Lynchburg for being uh, so friendly and cordial to the police officers in their rounds, making their job a lot better. That's about all I got, but basically I wanted to say that Lynchburg is trying, this community is trying, heart to heart is trying to be a a good representative here in the neighborhood to bring 
uh, more Christian-like atmosphere and to make sure that we are on the right track as far as uh, race and relations is concerned. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. P.J. Wright. Anybody else? Reed. Reed, I'm sorry. My name is Andre Wright, and I work in radio and television. And as a part of the community, we always look for opportunities to give back. And we established a um, initiative to show support to law enforcement, whereby we've raised about two thousand dollars to get the uh, police officers, security guards, state troopers, uniforms clean at quick as a wink flag cleaners on Fort Hill Village. So we are just trying to get the words out. Uh, the word out. This, we raised again about two thousand dollars. We've only spent about nine hundred. So if you know of any police officers, uh, security guys, state troopers who are doing a good job, they simply need to go to Quick as a Wink to get their uniforms clean until the $2,000 is exhausted. Thank you. Would you like to come up to the mic? Uh, are you sure? Okay. okay. Later on. He's <laughs> coming. Yes, my name is Jonathan Wilder. Um, we're having a uh, Love Matters Back to School program. It's like a basketball tournament, pep rally. Um, basically to just show more love in the community. You know, um, it's gonna be Saturday, August 13th, 2016 at four o'clock p.m. Um, and we're gonna be giving out school supplies to the youth. Uh, we got at least 200 backpacks and things of that sort. Um, school supplies, pencils, paper, um, it's going to be at the Jubilee Family Development Center, um, 1512 Florida Avenue. Um, and we'd like to see the community come out. Uh, we just want to give back. So that's all I have to say. And thank you. Thank you, Mr. Wilder. Any other community comments, ideas you want to share, hopes? Anybody? How about city staff? Joanne Martin, do you have anything you want to say? Out of communications and marketing? Anybody else? Kent White? Let me make sure I give you the opportunity. Okay. Um, at this point, we're going to wrap up. Uh, what I'd say in summary is we've got two things we need to work on. Um, a number one is going to be communication, setting that date for the new Neighborhood Watch um, reinstatement meeting, and then also sending you information about the group that's going to be meeting here on Thursdays, just in case you don't already know about this. And this was the group that came together to pull resources out of Action Item 5. Okay, well, that's all we have for tonight. And I thank you all so much for coming out. It was a great meeting. I think um, what started three months ago, three plus months ago, has turned out into something great. So I really appreciate your feedback and coming to that first meeting and this follow-up meeting. And we'll definitely be in touch. We're a team. We're going to work together to make our neighborhood and park safe. Thank you very much. Thank you.